Great friends, it is Tuesday afternoon and we are officially taking to the stream and almost simultaneously taking to the radio airwaves. What's happening on Tuesday? Today is November what? What's today's date? November 10th maybe? Yes. Something like that? Yeah, November 10th. Pretty good. I can't believe I figured that out or knew that. Hey, you know what today is? Today is the birthday of the United States Marine Corps, 245 years of the United States Marine Corps. For those of you that are current Marines, for those of you that are retired Marines, for those of you who are families of Marines, for those of you that work on the bases around San Diego, I just wanna say a very happy birthday to the United States Marine Corps. You guys have over the years treated us so well whether it was flying from Miramar and landing on a bird at the golf course at Camp Pendleton, or if it was flying on a cod plane from North Island and landing on the USS Abraham Lincoln, uh, Marines and uh, the Navy and sailors, uh, we have been so fortunate to have been around all of you guys to uh, and women and to have you know, hosted golf tournaments on the base at Camp Pendleton and raised money and given scholarships to Marine and military families. So just that's part of the culture of San Diego. Glad we have been a part of it. And on a day like today, for all of you who are serving or who have served in the United States Marine Corps, 245 years, happy birthday. I'm not qualified to say it. I never served, but out of respect, oorah. Okay. So here we go. Tuesday afternoon. I did watch Monday night football last night. I was not planning on watching Monday night football because I am not really going to spend a lot of time watching the 0-9 New York Jets, even if it's the only thing on. And frankly, going into the game, the 2-5 and five New England Patriots weren't something I planned on watching. The Jets had a lead. and I thought, oh my goodness, they're actually going to get their first win. The Patriots make their comeback, tie the game. With two minutes to go, I'm thinking, you know, Joe Flacco is a Super Bowl champion quarterback. He's already thrown three touchdown passes in this game. You got a good shot here if you're the Jets. Didn't take long for New England to get the ball back because the Jets couldn't do anything with it, and they go on to kick a long field goal to win the game and then celebrated like they won the Super Bowl. So Monday Night Football, definitely on my mind. It's certainly not like my top priority, but it was the only thing on sports it was on TV last night. So let me say good afternoon to mi hermano numero uno, representing the 805, Oxnard, California, Ventura County in the house. Here he is, grande, Alejandro Padilla, representing in La Casa. Hola. Hola. I tuned in in the fourth quarter of that game, and I saw the Jets had a lead. And I was like, what the hell? Like, it just didn't even make sense. It didn't register to me that the Jets could have a lead. And it, like, I didn't think it was physically possible for them to have a lead. I didn't, I didn't think it was physically possible for them to score touchdowns. I had no idea. I was like, wait, how bad is Cam Newton then? Like, what, what is happening here that they can't score on the Jets and the Jets have a, have a lead? Like, it made no sense to me. And then the world strained out and the Jets started doing stupid things like lining up 12 guys on a field goal attempt and giving them an automatic first down. It just started to make sense. And, and uh, bad football is just as fun to watch as great football. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but watching a team just charger all over themselves when it's not there the chargers is fun. It, I yeah. had a great time watching that fourth quarter last night. I know I'm with you. I, I was waiting for the jets to charger all over themselves, exactly as you just said it. What was kind of funny about it was I was watching the game and it got down to the last few seconds and I happened to be on the radio last night in LA and you, Alex, you know my boy Doug Whaley, the former GM of the, of the Bills, yep. he was on the phone at the time and the two of us are sitting here watching the game while we're multitasking and trying to talk on the air, neither of us are paying attention to what the other one is saying because we're both just watching the last few seconds of the game. So, yeah, the world got straightened out there yeah. when, when the Jets figured out a way to lose. So, let me say good afternoon to a man at six foot seven inches tall, 135 pounds, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max. A guy who's just been pushing that microphone around since the moment we clicked on here today. Say hello, representing the south side of Chicago, bringing the street cred, and still rocking that schmata on his head. 
No, nah, it's a different yeah. hat. I know, different hat, but I like it. I, I The way I said, bring in the street cred and still rocking the schmata on that head. It was very snatchy, rappery of me. Mm. Here he is, John Browner in the house. What's up, Big Brown? Listen, uh, I hate to start you guys off by correcting y'all when the show starts mm -hmm. this early. We are mm -hmm. barely four minutes in. Mm -hmm. Y'all not going to congratulate Cam last night? Because we sit here and we say every Monday, it's a week-to-week -week <laughs> league. It's a week-to-week -week league. It's a week-to-week -week league. Mm -hmm. And here we go. The Jets played well last night. Joe mm -hmm. Flacco did what Joe Flacco does. Y'all wonder why Joe Flacco, the backup quarterback on the Jets, because of what y'all saw. Yeah, he threw three touchdowns. He threw some bombs. But Joe Flacco throws bombs. But you know what happens when you throw bombs? You also throw bomb interceptions that basically turn into punts. And that's how they lost the game. The Jets played well last night. In a week-to-week -week league, the Jets played well. The Patriots played better. Listen, the, the Patriots are one fumble away from this team actually looking like they're a playoff team. I, I, I just – I want people to give Cam Newton credit where credit is due. And I he didn't get it. He's not getting what it from y'all. He beat the Jets. We got, to hand out, we got to hand out participation trophies to beating the Jets now? And they they it took, no it took, it took a 51 yard field goal in the last second of the game where he threw no touchdowns and ran for 15 yards on 10 carries. Like, now we got to like hand the guy the MVP trophy because he beat the Jets. Like, he had you, two touchdowns. He had, he had two dude, touchdowns you are last. just reaching this week, man. He had, he had two touchdowns last night. What What's you mean? He, did he Cam throw Newton. for a touchdown or did he Cam get Newton like little one yard touchdowns? Cam Newton had two touchdowns last night. See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all always trying. Y'all always try to take. Well, not you, not you, Scott. I'm gonna leave you alone on this one, Scott. <laughs> AP, why are you trying to take credit from Cam? Why are you trying, trying to take credit to from take, Cam? I'm not trying to take or give him credit. That's I feel like you point. are. I'm not trying like to. Take, I'm not trying to take anything from the guy. He beat the Jets. I'm gonna come in here and like start calling that he's MVP or something. I didn't say any of that. So I why do I? Have, why do I? Mike, real serious question. No jokes here at all. Why do we have to give Cam credit, Cam Newton, any credit for beating the winless Jets? Because again, I will restate this: in a week-to-week -week mm. league, the Jets played a good football game last night, and Cam Newton led a comeback on the night where the team played well. Yes, I know they are winless. Okay, I know they are winless. But we've seen strange, not stranger things, but strange things happen this season where teams who are not supposed to win, win. How many points did the Bucs it's score? Funny, it's funny you bring this up like this, though, because yesterday you were giving me so much grief for calling the Steelers a great team when it's a week-to-week right. -week league and the Cowboys right. almost beat them. And you were like, right. you were trashing the Steelers. But That's the Cowboys exactly where I'm played going. a really I good wasn't, game. It's exactly where I'm going. I'm wondering this. Are you going to give here, – here's my qu qu question for you. You believe Cam Newton deserves a bunch of credit last night, right? The, the Patriots come back. They win. He scored two touchdowns on the ground. Give Cam Newton credit, right? Sure. Right. Yes. Yes. That's okay. what I'm saying. Right. Give Cam Newton the credit he deserves. All right. I have a question. I have a question for you. Will you give credit to a guy like Ben Roethlisberger? No. <laughs> no. no. So wait. No. So wait. Just to be clear. Just Not going to gonna clear. do it. Just to be clear. Okay. The, Cow the Cowboys are a bad team. Yes. Okay. The Jets are an even worse team. Way worse. Okay. The Steelers are a good team. I would yes, absolutely. The Patriots are a mediocre team. Below average, yes. Okay. So the the Steelers go on the road, they play the Cowboys. Cowboys catch a little bit of fire with this new quarterback. Steelers have to come back late. Roethlisberger throws a game-winning touchdown pass and Roethlisberger gets zero Zero credit. Don't give him any credit. But Cam Newton makes a comeback late in the game against the lowly New York Jets. And we all need to give Cam Newton credit today. Yeah, because oh, okay. Okay. the records on both these teams, if the Steelers are undefeated, right? The Steelers are great. That's got to count for something if they're undefeated, even in a week-to-week -week league. Listen, we we know. We know the Cowboys are trash. OK, who was the quarterback? Don't know. You know who Joe Flacco is. Joe Flacco played a, Joe Flacco, Super Bowl MVP, played a good game last night. Bomb touchdowns. Did we not forget the whole bomb thing I went through before we started? You mean bomb? Bomb? bomb like the bomb, bomb touchdowns? Bomb, the bomb? Joe Flacco. 
Okay, Joe Flacco. Can we just, Flacco can we just admit, dude? What can we can we just admit what the deal is here? I mean, come on, man. What can we just can we just admit what the deal is, bro? What is it? What you come mean, on, bro? What you, you know, you know, on, what did, you know what did cross my mind yesterday when that game did finish because I did What's stay that? till the end when that when he hit that field goal. I was like, oh man, Jeff Garcia gonna be so pissed tonight because mm-hmm. Cam Newton gonna be looking all fly up there and he won. What's he gonna say now? That I, that crossed my mind, but I'm not gonna come on here and be like. Cam Newton, way to go, bro. Way to go, bro. What a performance last night by Cam Newton, earning all $500,000 he's making this year. Woo! The That's shot the put throws. For shoulders some people, ain't about the money. What you, shot put? He was throwing bullets last night out there. His what you, form, shot puts? His form is a shot put. Like it, well, it's terrible. His form's terrible. <laughs> but that, that, them, <laughs> them spirals were on fire last night. He was throwing I mean, I guns. Was- I would think you would give him Ben Roethlisberger more credit knowing that today the Steelers, and I'm, I'm reading this directly from ESPN.com, today the Steelers have placed Ben Roethlisberger and three others on the reserve COVID-19 list yep. after they were deemed high-risk close contact with the tight end named Vance McDonald who returned a positive test. This was on Monday. So yes. Roethlisberger and a couple other guys now have to isolate for five days because they had contact with this guy. So, Browner, I would think that you would say, man, Ben Roethlisberger, I know the Dallas Cowboys aren't very good this year and they're on their fourth quarterback, but, bruh, I mean, you were, you were playing, and uh, who knows? You may, you may have COVID, for all we know, and, and through the game-winning touchdown. First of all, Cam already beat COVID. But, again, mm. no credit for Cam, but now we want to give Ben Roethlisberger for maybe having the sniffles. Come on, man. Well, listen, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger. You know, you're you're is asking a- us to balance this out, you know? I mean, we're, you're, you're, you you won't give Ben Roethlisberger any credit ever because no. you think he, he's a former rapist is what you've said many times. Ain't no, ain't no, and, ain't no and, former. And, and and so you <laughs> – an accused rapist. There we go. How about that? There we okay? go. And, and, and so oh, you – you, you have a, a built-in hatred for Roethlisberger yep. and a built-in brotherhood for Cam. Hats, hats so and style. Call, call it what it is, dog. What you mean? I Listen, listen, listen. Everybody knows I love Cam Newton. He's a great football player. He's a great stylist. He's taking the game fashion forward. I can appreciate <laughs> and respect that, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't like Ben Roethlisberger because he allegedly raped multiple women. I got a problem with that. So I can give mm-hmm. him congratulations for nothing. And much like Tony LaRusso, who I'm gonna get to at some point in this show before it's over. I can't I can't get down with that. I can't get down with that. So I'm sorry. I just can't do it. He just, I can't do it. Shout out to Mike Thomas. Let me ask, but he just let me gets ask down you with this. murder. He's cool with that. Allegedly murdered. All good with who? that. Who murdered who? OJ. Look it up in a docket. Huh? Go to the LA County Courthouse. You see some murder convictions? Innocent. Yeah. How about let me ask you this question? I mean, this is not gonna be a popular one, but I'll ask it to you anyway. Were you down with Kobe? What do you do? Mm. What, what Kobe Bryant do? Mm-hmm. That mutual situation he had. I'm sorry. Listen, you get caught with three semen in your you, underwear. Just, just telling, telling you, you what the accusations if, were. If you get caught with three semen in your underwear, I can't. I I, I can't back you up on that. Mm. I can't mm-hmm. support you in that situation. You out here mm-hmm. doing the ooly dooly, leaving it in there. I can't. I can't get with that. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> be a no for me, dog. With, every day you come up with new words. I like it. Ooly dooly. I don't mm-hmm. know about that, but I'm. Boop. Alex, you know about no, Ooly but boo boo is not a new word. I, I, no, boo boo yesterday. Yeah, I clipped something with that, and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot he didn't know what boo boo was. That is not like, <laughs> like, like it's like calling something booty. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Okay. Same, Same thing. thing. Yeah. Same thing. Mm. Same thing. Can I just say one thing? It's freezing. Okay. <laughs> like I, 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 I realize that it's. I always, I always say again, dog. <laughs> Alex, you got your blanket. I realize that, um, that it's not Chicago. It's not New York. It's not Pittsburgh or Philly, okay? It's not like that kind of freezing, but it's the kind of freezing where, like, I'm wearing the same sweater I was wearing yesterday because it's cozy and it's warm, and I don't want to take it off. And people are going to be like, you're disgusting. You just wear the same stuff every day. And it's true, I do, man. In this COVID world, I wear literally almost the same thing every day. Like, or at least, like, I, I mean, put it this way. I, I've been thinking about going into my closet and emptying all my drawers of all my crap that I never use and I never wear. I'm down to like four t-shirts, a couple of long sleeve shirts, four or five pairs of shorts. I have three pairs of underwear that I've been rotating through, even though I got a drawer full of them. You know, I got, what, what does that look, Browner? 
What what do you mean listen, it's disgusting? Listen, you had me with everything till you got to the underwear part. Come on, bro. You can't be going through the same three underwear. No, 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 no. If you got it, I understand that sometimes you get stuff fresh out the dryer. So when things are in rotation, they get dirty, they get washed. So those are things you mostly find yourself with your hands on. But underwear, no, I can't get with that. Come on, man. The can't get with three, that, huh, dog? I can't get with the three un the three underwear, four shirts. I can rock with four shirts. I can rock with two pairs of pants. I can't rock with no three underwear. All right, total on, side bro. note then. How many pairs of underwear is acceptable to have as a, as a as a man? I got a I got a solid 21. It's like something like that. I got a lot, dude. Like I I Well, you were yeah. you were very exact right there. Like you know exactly how many whoa, pairs of because pants I do you got. laundry like every 3 weeks when I run out. Whoa, whoa, I'm like it whoa, sounds whoa, whoa. It sounds like <laughs> what are you doing? What you so doing one pair a day? What you doing to him, man? He said you got panties, man. <laughs> My panties? That's what he said. He said you got panties. That's fine. It's all wow. the same. It all covers no, it's what it's supposed he, to cover. Care? I don't care. What does he care? Though? Panties got laced offended. on them, dog. I don't get offended by words. No, People oh, do. Okay. I don't. <laughs> all right, Browner. The ant. The question was, what is the right number of pairs of underwear should a man have in an underwear drawer? I'm gonna assume that I, you say three is way too little, which I agree. Right. I, I'm going to assume that you think 21 is way too much. So where no. where do you? I would say 15 to 20, 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I try to buy new ones every three months. Dude, that's the other question, out. too, because for a while there, I had underwear yeah. until there was a hole in it. Like, All right, time to go. Like, yeah, now, me too. It's like, but now, you know, I guess adult money. Now I'm like, okay, I could actually go buy some underwear. Well, and two, also, you they, know, they make you great advancements out? in underwear. There are some really good underwear out yeah. there. And so, therefore, right. you've got to be able to ver diversify. But where do you buy your underwear from? Costco. Costco, yeah. uh, Target, Tommy Walmart. John off the internet, mm -hmm. Nike. Yeah, Nike. I don't buy into the whole, I mean, unless they want to be a sponsor. I love Tommy John, but I don't buy into the whole, you got to pay $50 for a pair of underwear. No way. No chance. No, not for, not, not here. Uh, mm -mm. Dude, when you go to, you can go to Costco, you go to I Costco know. though and get some of those like nice, like, uh, what do they call those? Like they're like boxer briefs. There's a <laughs> kind of like tighten the legs, like cycling shorts, but they're like tight in the nuts. So hey, they give you on, the man. proper support you need. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel me? Wait, wait, you know wait, what wait, saying? wait, 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 wait. You said jockey shorts. Like you didn't know what they were. No, no. Boxer briefs. Boxer briefs, jockeys. Like you didn't know what they were. So no, you... that's what I just didn't know what they were called. Okay. Yeah. Oof, I was gonna say, no, oh. dog. I, I listen. I I don't wear boxers. I gave up on boxers a long time ago. Yep. I don't need my stuff slapping on my on my <laughs> you know on my thighs. Too much movement you know? for you, you know. Yeah, and so I like them to be tight. You know, I don't, but I want the feel of a tighty white. Are you like a I just, Brazilian <laughs> cut guy? <laughs> what do you mean by Brazilian? Like you, go, you wear like you wear like the little like uh, banana <laughs> hammocks. No, dude. I'm not oh my that. god. Oh <laughs> no, man. Wait. Box of briefs. Now, listen, I'm exaggerating when I say three pairs, but <laughs> I do have my three favorite pairs, and then I got like maybe four or five backups after that. I got a full drawer full of underwear. I got a full I got drawers full of t-shirts. I swear to you. In COVID, I'm down to like three or four or five pairs of shorts, five or six t-shirts, work separate workout gear, socks and underwear. I don't want to ever get dressed up again. I don't want to ever have to like put on a suit. In fact, I haven't worn anything on my feet other than flip flops and sneakers in the whole year. I've given up on shoes completely. I can tell I, you how many times I put pants on, yeah. like three times since March. That's, That's it. Nice. And I mean, I wear shorts. It's not like I'm walking on my underwear, but like pants, jeans to the wedding, to a dinner, and Saturday when I was outside. That was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. And only because it was raining, or else I would have gone shorts. But it was raining, so. Can't get my calves wet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will things. say, though, I will so say all the things the manscaped underwear that came in the box, they're probably my favorite. Like, yeah, they're good. I'm not like, I'm not exaggerating because they're a sponsor. Like, they're super comfy. Yeah. They're, they're well they're designed, good. well done, well designed, solid material to underwear, dude. Again, if you haven't bought underwear in a long time, I encourage you to do so. There have been a lot of it. Even Fruit of Balloons made some very good advancements Wait, what? in underwear. Fruit of Balloons? The Fruit of Balloons? What they, and what they call? Say it again. <laughs> Wait, say, and they, what, Fruit of Balloon. Fruity, fruity Balloons? Yeah. What they call? Yeah, oh, they call fruity balloons, man. It's some, it's some tidy whities with the yellow and the blue stripe, right? Yeah, the with the grapes balloons? on there. Yeah, fruity balloon. Yeah, fruity balloon.
That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I said. Yeah. Why are y'all acting like it's something different? Drones. No, no, that's what we said. Right. All right, stick around. We're just getting going. I got a lot to talk about today. I see Gron is wearing a San Diego State sweatshirt. We haven't really had a chance to breathe or digest and even get into what happened with San Diego State last week. At some point, maybe we'll get there today. Lots more, obviously, on NFL stuff. John Clayton coming up. Great show right around the corner. Stay with us. <laughs> Hey, everybody. It is Tuesday afternoon. If you are with us on YouTube, hey, look, I'm learning more and more about YouTube every day. And what's super important is that if you're here and you're over in our YouTube chat, we've got several hundred people that are inside of this chat. You got to come over and hit the thumbs up, the like button. And then if you go down below and you comment, hey, what's up? Great friends. How's it going? Whatever. Make sure that you subscribe, you comment, you like, we appreciate that for you YouTubers out there. For those of you who prefer to watch and listen on YouTube, make sure you do all of those things. Like, comment, and subscribe. For those of you that are on any of the audio podcast platforms listening, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or any others that we don't even know of, again, make sure you subscribe, review, whatever, because that helps us communicate with you guys and send you notifications when new content comes out. And for everybody that's listening on traditional radio, Listen, for a year and a half, I walk around this town and people would come up to me and they go, yo, Kaplan, what's your deal, man? When are you getting yourself back on radio? And then here's me trying to sell it, right? What do you need me on radio for? You got a phone on you, right? Yeah. You got a radio on you right now? No. Then what do you need the radio for? You got your phone. I I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. We're on all the audio podcast platforms. No, no, no. I want to get in my car. I want to turn on the radio. I want to flip it to 1090. And I want to listen on the radio. I get it. I get it. You wanted it. You got it. We're back on the radio as well, back on 1090. So along with the crew, Grande Alejandro Padilla, Hermano Numero Uno, rep in the 805, Oxnard Ventura in the house. And with Mr. Street Cred himself from the south side of Chicago, Big Brown. It is Kaplan and crew on Tuesday. Okay. Speaking, hey, of, hey, uh, speaking of the 805, I mm. have a delivery from an unnamed pizza place coming on friday and i cannot wait but i will not say the name anymore you are getting a pizza delivery or we are all getting a pizza delivery from an unnamed pizza place that is slightly overrated slightly overrated excuse me wow um, i never had this pizza so it is overrated to me i hear y'all yeah. talking a lot about this pizza i ain't never seen it before i hey, listen jb you've never had it i i get it from you but the fact that that scott who's had it multiple times says that it's overrated when he actually told me how much he loves it i'm a little offended right now but well <laughs> well i'll tell you why because i've never had the opportunity to truly have this pizza when it's fresh, like out of the oven, right. I've had, I've had to have the, the two and a half, three, four hour delivery, you know, but how is that, <laughs> how's that, how's that my fault though? Like, well, that? But, but, but let me, I'll, and I'll throw one other little small problem at you. Every oh. time I've had this pizza, it's never been the kind of pizza that I want, which is how I would, you know, kind of have my threshold and judge. It's always been the pizza that you've chosen to order. So, Good point. so, I mean, there's just been a lot of problems for yeah. me. You know what? Good yeah. point. Yeah. So, uh, to oh. answer your question, it's a delivery for me. On Friday. Mm. Okay, got Wait, it. So you're not taking our orders? No, not anymore. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was quick. <laughs> not anymore. That turned not around anymore. fast. <laughs> you know, my son Thought and I had it. a conver my son and I had a conversation just the other day. Um, I was telling him that my GF likes to order sometimes for her sons. She orders um uh what's the name of the burger place? Uh, Shake Shack. You guys ever been to Shake Shack? I Overrated, Shake Shack. yes. Yeah. Over overrated. So that's what overrated. my son said. My son said overrated. So I was at a Shake Shack in Denver the first time and I went, you know what? Hmm. This is a tasty burger. And I the first really, time I had it was in London. I said the same thing. Yeah, I thought this is a damn good burger. In fact, I liked it so much. I wanted a second one, but I knew I was just complete fat ass if I <laughs> if I ordered a second one. So I didn't. Then, Alex, didn't you and I a few years ago go to Minneapolis for the Super Bowl? Yep. And there was a Shake Shack in the mall 
uh, food court <laughs> where we did yeah. Radio Row in the Mall of the Americas, right? right? right. And I think so one day we, we were literally placed like right in front of the Shake Shack. So we had mm -hmm. to smell it, see it all day. Yeah. And we finally crushed it and it was really good. By the way, that I was, was a proud Super of Bowl. us, dude. Very proud of us. Because, because we, didn't we need both it every day. wanted it. We both yeah. wanted it. And we only got it the last day there. You know, Browner, that was the Super Bowl where Sheila E. got pissed at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, what are you, what, what is with you and famous women, dude? Hey, Sheila was it, E., Aaron the, Andrews. Who was the guy that, that showed up with her at the, was it? Uh, like Jimmy Jam. Jimmy Jam showed up. What was Terry was, Lewis? He was there. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, we there. were interviewing Sheila, Sheila E., and she was pretty pissed off at Scott. And uh, and then they showed up, and they hugged her, and then she was like, yeah, we're done here, right? <laughs> and she's wow. like, yeah. yeah. What happened was is is is, is <laughs> Alex comes up to me, and he goes, yo, um, you want Sheila E.? He goes, like, I'm just taking a chance. You, you want to talk to Sheila E.? And I'm like, Sheila E.? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm just, I think I, I may have sung this song that first popped into my mind was like, I, I don't even know if it's really a Sheila E song. <laughs> <laughs> she don't live uh, the glamorous life she got. Uh, uh, uh. Does that sound like a Sheila E song? That is a no. song of finale. Yeah, Prince. May, I think Prince. Uh, Prince. No, no, no. Yes, yes. That is in the ballpark of Sheila E. Yes. So Sheila E sits down, right? And I'm like, yo, oh. Sheila E. I'm like, what up, Called girl? Called a man's touch. Yeah. I'm like, what up, girl? How you doing, Sheila E.? And she's like, hey, what's going on? You know, welcome to Minneapolis. I'm like, hey, thanks. I'm like, so, um, you know, let's talk about some per percussion. You know, let's talk about some drumming while singing. That's pretty cool. And we're talking, right? And then I go, so let me get this straight. I'm like, so you were, you were part of the whole Prince deal, but like, did you and Prince ever go out or what What was the relationship? And she she got pissed like right away. Like, mm -hmm. like you, she actually was like, you don't know about my relationship with Prince and you're going to have me sit down here with you. And I'm like, yeah, but just, just hold on. Just so you know, like 30 seconds ago, they were like, yo, you want to talk to Sheila E? I was like, hell's to the yeah. And then they put you in front of me. I don't have time to sit here and research. I go, I'm just asking you stuff off the top of my head. Did you sleep with Prince? Yes or no. Right. <laughs> so oh, Sheila e got better do it. Yeah. So Sheila E got all pissed off at me, but this had nothing to do with Sheila E. This had everything to do <laughs> Shake Shack. with Shake Shack. This had everything to do oh, with Shake Shack. Okay. You guys don't like it. No, no. Hold on. I want to say something. Okay. I, I like Shake Shack. Okay. However, I, again, been to one in Denver, had had it one time in the mall in Minneapolis. Okay. My girlfriend orders Shake Shack by DoorDash for her sons. Oh my God. It was like it, 90 bucks. Well, that's what my son said. My son said the same thing. He's like, dude, that's like a hundred dollar order. It really right. it, it was like a $60 order. I, I asked her last night if she would check. <laughs> it was like a $60 God. order. But here's the thing. When this is usually on a Saturday night, which means she and I are going to go somewhere and have dinner out somewhere. And, but when we get back, presuming there might be a little bit of consumption of alcohol, I'm going to need something late night. So she gets the extra burger, completely plain, meat, cheese, bun, that's it. And late at night, microwaved I'm with nothing, no ketchup, no lettuce, tomato, onions, no secret sauce, no pickles, nothing. Me, that's a good lady, cheese, man. She know you go on a burger before you want a burger. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. My visual of you coming home from the bar or wherever you were at, uh, two drinks a couple, in. A couple of drinks in. Like, <laughs> I just, for some reason, now I'm just picturing you in shirtless in the kitchen in your underwear, microwaving a burger, just like, oh, I can't wait to eat this thing. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm not, I'm not in my underwear. I'm not shirtless. I'm still dressed from, I go right into the house to the refrigerator, get the burger, microwave the burger. And then I usually cut the burger in quarters because I believe in some way oh that I'm God. eating less Jeez. by not eating it in, by picking what? the whole thing up. I don't know. You it's and Linda thing. with that mentality never made sense to me. All right. So bottom line, burger, meat, cheese, bun, no, nothing. Bomb. I'm telling you, it is a bomb burger. I tell my son this the other day. He says exactly what you said, Browner, overrated. And I said, overrated or overpriced? And he said, no, overrated. I said, well, what's the better burger? He said, in and out. Mm. I go, dude, in and out mm. with respect to in and out is not the better burger to Shake Shack. Is that what you said? No, wow. What did you say? I got it. Oh, he, I'm sorry. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. My man said five guys. Better there you go. Him. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. There's the winner. Browner said, hold on, want hold to, on. This is, so, this is working so we're from home. Have, 
So wait, we're just gonna have an argument of like the most overpriced burger because Five Guys is crazy overpriced too. Hold on, hold on, I can't hear you. True too. Okay, hold on. Five Guys is very expensive. I hold on a second. Come here, Justin. My son is here. My twenty-year-old son, come sit on my lap. Come sit on my lap. Why can't my son sit on my lap? I don't care that you're twenty and you're a grown man. Can't you sit on my lap like like a dad wants his son to sit on his lap? I'm here. Like if you're talking quality burger, it's not a question. It's five guys all the way. If we're talking price, then I'm going to have to go in and out because both five guys and um, Shake Shack are just terribly in price. Like you can spend a good $13, $14 at five guys just like that. Just getting a big, Minimum. big burger and Minimum. shake. But if I'm yeah. in and out, I can, you know, get a little more with my money. All right, here's a man thinking economically. I got to say, I'm proud of this young guy. <laughs> proud of this young guy. Well. You this, guy's, well. this guy's thinking economically. I like that. I guess I, now we're going to have this debate then. We're going to have it. Let's just do it. Like all the three of us have to answer this question right now. Because okay. I finally have had five guys. First time in my life, I had it this year earlier when I was in the 805. They just opened one in Oxnard. And I was like, yeah, I'll go. Got some, got some five guys. What kind um, of fries did you get? Do they have multiple type of fries? Yeah. I just See, got, you ain't doing it I right. Got, you well, I've only been once. Oh, well, now dog. twice. Now twice. Did you get a hot dog there also? I got the burger. The hot dog at Five Guys for it. I got the bacon burger. No, dude. Hot dogs at Five Guys are great. Hey, you know where? <laughs> this is a whole other thing. I won't even bring it up yet. But let's just answer the question right now. If you had to choose burger only, take away the price, take away wherever you got to go get it. We're just talking about burger right now. Flavor, your choice. You got three burgers in front of you. You can only choose one. In and out, five guys, Shake Shack. And it's all the same, right? Like a double double, whatever. Each one has their own name for it. But you got two pieces of meat, two slices of cheese, and then however else you eat your burger, everybody likes it different. But you got to choose right now. Okay. For me, for me, it would be five guys. It would be five guys. Because I just I prefer the way that they make their uh their patties. Um, I like that you what you the the different stuff you can get on it. I know In and Out has a secret menu. I don't have time for all that, bro. Put it on the board. I love In and Out. <laughs> Huge fan of In and Out. But mm -hmm. I the secrecy portion of it, I'm mm -hmm. good, man. Just tell me what I can and can't get on the burger. I didn't even know they had barbecue sauce at In and Out. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it behooved me. Someone told me that I called them a liar to their face. <laughs> I don't know. So Put the menu up on the board, man. Tell me what I can give them in and out. Then y'all might be number one. But right now, number one for me, five guys. Alex? Shake Shack. It's Same. the bun. Wow. The bun. Same. The bun Same. takes it to another level. Uh, I love in and out I, I, I mean, I wish I didn't have to wait in line for 45 minutes just to eat in and out But the bun puts Shake Shack on another level. Five mm -hmm. guys third. I agree. I'm going to go Shake Shack. I'm going to go uh, in and out and then five guys. Now, can I ask you guys do this? If you don't mind, let's post this question on sided right now, because this is a very, because this isn't a question of who's got the best burger. That's not the question. The question is of these three burgers, which is the one you choose as number one, Shake also, Shack, in and out five guys. How do you go want ahead. me to frame this question? I don't know. You have a way with words. You figure it out. The first time I had Shake Shack was in London. <laughs> yeah. And I think their meat is regulated different there. Because yeah. that was, uh, it was amazing there. I got back here and I had one and it just wasn't the same. All right. It we didn't taste we, the same. We should, do a, we should do a taste test where we take three burgers, one from In-N-Out, one from Five Guys, one from, from Shake Shack, line them up. And by the way, meat and cheese only. N nothing on it. Because this way you get the essence of the burger. No. No, you don't you also that, know what you also know what takes Shake Shack above In and Out is if In and Out offered bacon, it probably wouldn't be close. But the fact that oh, Shake Shack yeah. does offer bacon, it just like everything's better with bacon. I mean, it's just it's just the facts. You know what I mean? Oh, they put good. bacon on donuts all of a sudden. I'm like, look at this, the best donut I've ever had. It has bacon on it. Mm. I like the I like the uh, Shake Shack cheese fries though. Those are delicious. I take Five yeah. Guys fries. No, five I, I guys would. do the seeds of Cajun fries from Five Guys. Yeah, those mm, are good. Mm, mm. But the animal fries from In and Out are, I mean, you gotta take your blood pressure and cholesterol medication probably right after. But the 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 animal fries at In and Out are freaking bomb. Is that on the menu? <laughs> are animal <laughs> fries on the menu at In and no. Out? Or no, that's no. a secret no. menu. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even know they had that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're great. They really are. I thought it was just dressing. 
All right, Alex is going to post this for us on Sided right now and let everybody who's listening, everybody who's watching, get involved in this conversation. You have to choose I'm trying one to frame burger. it because I really I'm trying to frame it because I really want to say like price does not matter. So mm -hmm. I just say that price does not matter. Yeah. Who has the best burger? That's yep. what I'm going to say. That's it. That's that's getting right to the heart of the matter. Price aside, who has the best burger? In and out, five guys, Shake Shack. Take the price out of the equation. I'm telling you right now, meat for meat. Whoa, Shake Shack whoa, got the no, best meat, yo. No. You ain't gotta put it like that. Say burger for burger, dog. You ain't the this, meat for meat thing. This it's a whole <laughs> this this is a whole other conversation. And yeah. I think it's it's one to have. Shake Shack's got a pretty incredible chicken sandwich, too. I've heard. I, is it their fried chicken? And a great milkshake. I would hope so. It's called Shake Shack. But is it a fried chicken sandwich? Like a like it's a fried like a chicken Popeyes sandwich it's, or a or a Chick-fil-A? Like Chick yeah, I would do it. That's Come another on, man. It ain't in that don't 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 you start this now. They ain't in the ballpark of that Popeye's chicken sandwich, dog. They'll make me now, go there today. Now, what about like, you know what? I'm going to get a freaking burger today. Like this, I have already decided. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to get a burger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we should actually do a fried chicken sandwich off though. Like, remember Browner? We used to do the food challenges on the old 1090. Yeah. We should uh -huh. do a fried chicken sandwich challenge where it's like Crack Shack. Um, uh, what are some of the other places that you get? I mean, you say Shake Shack has a, a bomb fried chicken sandwich. I don't know. Or maybe we just make it more like Popeye's versus Chick-fil-A versus Cane's. Is Cane's in that same class? Where is Cane's? Oh, Justin, where's Raising Cane's? Cane's? Is that here? Yeah, yeah there's there's definitely one down in Chula Vista. Raising Ooh, Cane's. That's too, that's too and Santee. I don't, go, I don't go to either of those places. You know what, dude? I think there's one inside the Walmart off Arrow. No way. <laughs> Hold on. I think hey, so. Justin, I was at Walmart yesterday. Where is that Raising Cane's? <laughs> is that fried chicken place? Uh, Mira Mesa. Mira Mesa and Santee. Santee. My son's saying Mira Mesa. I go to Mira Mesa. I ain't going to Santee. Uh, I ain't going to Clan T for nothing. I know you're not. I know you're not. These are the best two segments of, of radio that we've done in a <laughs> long time. And I'm not kidding. These are this is what people want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good. Wait, wait, good what do we do? Come in here. We're gonna come in here and start breaking down Jets Cam Newton again. This is much more this is much more exciting. Yeah, I agree. All right, hey, let me have a minute here though to, to say thank you to one of our great sponsors. I'll oh wait, 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 wait! Before we get to that, before we get to that, don't uh, overlook the friendly. The friendly's got a great burger. Friendly? Oh, dude, but that's listen here, man. You want to talk about the best burger in San Diego? But that's what I'm saying. I, I don't want close the, the friendly want burger. The, the friendly burger in North Park. I don't care what anybody says. That is the best burger of all time. Okay, then Rockies I have a question. And PB, any, I agree. Anything, I agree. Nothing, nothing's closer to friendly. That's why I didn't want them left out. And I know Scott, we're not talking about Scott, them. Meat, cheese, I think mayo, and like yep. they might have their own sauce, maybe. And that's it. And you cannot adjust aioli it. Sauce. And you can't and adjust it. On it. That's the right, way they serve on. it. But I have a question. If you tell me you're getting a burger today and you tell me this place friendly, is this a I'm now a, I'm now going to the friendly. Okay, I was gonna say. I mean, if you're gonna go get a bomb burger, but what what is it? Is this a bar or is it just a standalone restaurant? Is it? Uh, what is there's it? two now. There it used to just be a, a stand. They do, it started as a place that they just wanted to sell pizza. Turns out one of their guys was like, "Hey, I got a really good recipe for a burger. Can I put it on the menu?" So it started as like just an off. Like you go in there, their menu is just slices of pizza, or you get full pizza, bread, stuff like that, and then they have a chalkboard. And it says, oh, friendly burger, five bucks. And that's how it started. And it blew up to the point where they took over this old place called Carnita Snack Shack over on University. And now they specialize in burgers over there. No pizza. Is this <laughs> they, they do like all kinds of burgers over there with fries and onion. Dude, I'm telling you, it's not even close. Guys. I, go there twice, close. I go there twice a week. It is, it, it's, it's the best burger I've ever had. Okay, but it right, wasn't right. in the conversation. All right. But yes. But in the conversation, you have a choice between three burgers. Shake Shack, In and Out, and Five Guys, and we're gonna find out what great friends think of those three burgers. As for this friendly burger, I'm down to come down to North Park and try this thing out anytime. Okay, let me have a minute to just say thank you to one of our our great sponsors. We're gonna thank him as the day goes on. Corky's Pest Control, one eight hundred nine zero one 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 zero two. Listen, I want everybody to hear what I'm saying to you. I know Corky's has been with this radio show for twenty years. Okay. And I know that you've probably called by now and you've probably become a Corky's client, but I just here to tell you anybody else who's out there, who's still not using Corky's, you need to call 
because Cork will take care of your problems. He'll do it at a really ridiculously inexpensive price. When it comes to termites, nobody has his four-year guarantee. And I'm telling you, quality, price, dependability, all of the factors you're looking for, this is the best of the best. Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102, LA, Riverside, San Diego County. Yo, Cork, I'm sending people your way. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky. Corky. All right, so Alex, I see that you're wearing your San Diego State hoodie today. Yeah. I know that you are an Aztec for life. This I know about you. Yeah. Okay. We have not really talked about what happened because it was Friday night, and then it becomes Saturday, and there's more college football, and then Sunday's NFL, and then Monday all you want to do is talk about how pleasurable it was to watch the Chargers blow up again. But can we mm -hmm. take a minute coming up and discuss what happened to San Diego State last Friday night? Let's have that conversation. We should. Stick around. Yeah, stick around, everybody. It is Tuesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. Regardless of where you're watching or listening, we're happy to have you all along. YouTubers, make sure you like and subscribe and comment. Facebookers, make sure you share. Uh, to everybody listening on audio podcast platforms, please make sure that you subscribe and review. And for those of you that are listening on 1090 on radio, you don't have to do jack squat. Just, just sit there and chill out. You know what I'm saying? And hang with us wherever you're going. And if you get out of your car, you can either listen to Mightier 1090's website, mightier1090.com, or you can just take the show on YouTube, which is what I suggest. Okay. Grande today is rocking his San Diego State hoodie. He's an Aztec for life. So today is Tuesday, and San Diego State played football on Friday of last week on Friday night at 6 p.m. <laughs> against San Jose State. Let me say this. If the game were in San Diego, it would be a non-factor, particularly this year because nobody's going to any of these games. If the game were at San Jose, it would be a non-factor game. No one would really have very much interest in it. But the fact that the game is being played in Carson at the Galaxies Stadium makes it even that much less attractive. Even though it's a Friday night and there's not a lot of football on, I'm telling you, Friday night, I started off, this is this last weekend, there was a high school football game that I was watching. Then I somehow got into the BYU-Boise State game that we had talked about last week. San Diego State, San Jose State was on my main TV because it was on at 6 o'clock. So I was interested in it. Completely freaked out, by the way, Alex, I should send you this picture. You can put it up on the screen. Completely freaked out watching San Diego State play football on the Galaxy's uh, home stadium. And you see San Diego State's logo at midfield. I just sent this to you. You might be able to put it up on the screen for everybody that's watching. Um, to see San Diego State's logo at midfield and the San Diego State logos in the end zone but to have the LA Galaxy logos in the background, it just, yeah. it's just so bizarre to see. But what we haven't talked about, and I think deserves a few minutes of time, is the fact that San Diego State lost this game to San Jose State. San Jose State has been a drag on the Mountain West Conference. You've had Boise State. You've had San Diego State. At times, you've had Fresno State. You need bottom feeders like UNLV and San Jose State and these kinds of schools to, to play decent enough so that games that are won actually have some form of meaning. San Diego State and San Jose State has been the difference in years past between Michigan and Appalachian State. Historically big, you know, upset in college football. San Jose State and the Mountain West, they need they need this school. I don't know if you guys have ever been to this school at San Jose State. Listen, let me tell you, it's beautiful. And it's right there. San Jose, the city, is in Santa Clara where the 49ers play. I mean, it's a beautiful area. And San Jose State has a very strange stadium because it's like a half of a stadium. The other half looks like a high school stadium. One half looks like a major college football stadium. Bottom line is this. If you're San Diego State, you should never lose to a sorry program like San Jose State. San Jose State came into this game on Friday night 2-0. I had read a stat that was the first time they were 2-0 since 1980 freaking 7. 
1987, dude. 2-0. Oh. <laughs> I ain't no. 2-0. Oh. San Diego State, for some reason, and I don't, I don't have a real analytical answer as to why it is, in the final analysis, because I was watching the game, I just felt like San Jose State wanted it more than San Diego State. I felt like San Diego State showed up like the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Dallas Cowboys. Like, they stink. We're good. We show up. We win. Well, sometimes it works and you have to make a late comeback and you escape with a win. And sometimes you get burned. And in this case, San Diego State got burned. Alex. Yep. San Jose State over your Aztecs? <clears throat> Dude, it's... This is uh when I was in college, San Diego State wasn't the Rocky Long powerhouse yet. Um, they had good seasons, but they weren't very good. This loss reminded me of when San Diego State lost to Cal Poly, the D2 school back mm -hmm. in the day. Like mm -hmm. that's how bad I took it. And I saw the show on Twitter trying to defend it. Carson Baker had a bad game. We're still it's still early in the season, dude. Before you laugh at me for this comparison, Browner, just listen to what I'm about to say. This is in, in this division. If you want to be like this, like want to be Pac-12 school where you where you claim victories over Stanford, which you have, you have, you have them. It's like if Bama lost to Vanderbilt. It should never happen, ever, ever, ever happen. San Jose State is – and you know what makes it even worse? Is that this quarterback that transferred from Arkansas who had like five or to ten scouts at the game didn't even play. He got hurt. He lost to the backup quarterback. It should never, ever happen. San Diego State is a football program in the Mountain West. In the Mountain West. I see you're looking at me. No one can see you, Browner. In the Mountain West, Josh, San Diego State let's take thinks a look at they are. San Diego State thinks they are like that school that, that Alabama is in the SEC, that oh Clemson is in the ACC. Well, they're not. Oh, when you said Bama, I didn't know you meant Alabama. Football? Come on, bro. What you doing? You could, no, like I said, no, it's a, no, it's a, no. it's the same. If Vanderbilt lost, if Vanderbilt beat Bama, that's how. Like it's, it should never happen. That's my point. It should just never happen. It should never lose San Jose State. I don't care how good they are this year, especially when they lost the quarterback. Bro, Bro so can we just agree now the season's over? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. It, it wasn't even. It wasn't even a season to to really. I mean, listen, if you're in the Mountain West and you're stuck only playing the Mountain West. You had no aspirations of anything bigger than the Idaho Potato Bowl. Like you, you lost. Unfortunately, you lost all the Pac-12 games on your schedule. You lost your trip to the Rose Bowl. You lost like all the things that that even try and elevate you as to a ranked school. But so, the okay, let me ask you a question. Have, the one at the thing end you have is, is at the end of the year, December twelfth, you've got BYU, and and that might turn into a big deal. I mean, however big a deal it could be. When the season ended last year, weren't they ranked? San Diego State. I don't remember. So I don't remember. I, my argument that I was going to try to make, if you ended the season 23, 24, 19, whatever the case may be, going into this year with COVID where the Big Ten hadn't played a game, the Pac-12 are canceling games left and right. This was your window. If you go undefeated and at the end of the year, you actually beat BYU, would at that point probably would have been undefeated and highly ranked. That's your that's your championship game. So you win that, you stay undefeated, you might get in the top 10. You get a New Year's Day bowl, and then after that, your program can start really going up if you uh whoever that dude is coaching them right now who quit on them the first time. <laughs> but now you drop the first game, well, you drop the second game of the season to a nobody. Third. Third to a nobody, it's over. It's over. At this point, I agree with you. I agree with you. There's nothing that they can do. Even if they beat BYU by that point, like no one's even looking, doesn't no one's looking at San Diego State anymore. They're not going to be ranked. There's not. There's nothing. But you, you want to in, something in about this conference. You cannot afford to lose a game if you oh, if you're the Alabama, if you're the if you're the Alabama, if you're the Clemson of this division or of this conference, you cannot lose a game. You they're can't. not. By the way, they're right. not the Alabama of the Mountain West. They're not the Clemson of the Mountain West. They're they're the Boise State is the top program in the Mountain West in the Mountain West Conference. Nationally speaking, they are the top program. Doesn't necessarily mean they're the best, just right. means that they have the highest profile. The most Sa recognizable. San Diego State would would come in as number 2 in the Mountain West Conference, but they're just not the difference between Alabama and Vanderbilt is 
<laughs> is monstrous. And the difference between San Diego State and San Jose State should be, but it isn't anymore, apparently. And by the way, just speaking of BYU for a second, we, we talk about how they're ranked number eight in the country and that San Diego State gets them at the end of the year. They've beaten nobody. They beat Navy. They're, they've had to rebuild a schedule, BYU, because they don't have a conference. So they're playing Troy, Louisiana Tech, University of Texas, San Antonio. Oh, yeah, God. they beat Houston, Texas State, Western Kentucky. And yeah, they beat Boise. I and mean, they beat the hell out of Boise. But still, BYU is playing nobody. Just but playing in, nobody. In a COVID year, this is how you get yourself moved into the top 10 and get yourself in a conversation where you don't belong. Well, because until big, you lose to San Jose State. <laughs> well, that's true. But at this point, I'm talking about Utah, and that's what would have made it a big game at the end of the year because they've been out here front running, playing puff cakes and getting themselves ranked up so you can come and knock them down. But you didn't even survive to that point. So when does basketball start? Because Malachi <laughs> Flynn might be a first-round pick, and I'm shocked by that. So I big saw up Malachi, to him. I, I saw uh, Lakers looking to draft Malachi Flynn, and I'm Dude, like, yes, please. Malachi Flynn should send his first game check to Tyler Hero. Because that's how he's going to get drafted. Is he Tyler Hero? Probably not. But what Tyler Hero did opened the door for a guy like Malachi Flynn, who is a specialist who can simply shoot the basketball and maybe may learn to do a couple of other things. Send your game check to Tyler Hero, bro, if you get drafted in the first round. That would be huge for San Diego State. Yeah. Hey, listen, let me go back to this, though, for a second. So – so San Diego State loses to San Jose State, and it wasn't even something we talked about yesterday. And I'm just going to take a guess here that for a lot of people listening, they're like, really? I didn't know. I didn't, didn't, know, I didn't know San Diego State lost to San Jose State. Hey, listen, I don't want to make too much of it because you guys, your point is right. I think that it's a COVID year, and this college football season is just trash. It's just not what people had hoped it might be. But the USC's that, kicking off at 9 a.m. Like, come on. What are we doing US, here? The USC kickoff at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning against Arizona State at the Coliseum. I actually thought that was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. And then I woke up on Saturday morning and watched the game at 9 a.m. and thought, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Because, <laughs> because yeah. as, a, as, as a player or as a coach, you don't want to be playing football at 9 o'clock in the morning. But on the other hand, as a viewer, you're like, wow, this is kind of cool. USC, Arizona State, 9 a.m. Wow, I kind of liked it. And then it had an awesome ending. That helped. Yeah, welcome welcome to my life as a soccer fan. You wake up and you got some sports on right away, right in the morning. But still, it shouldn't be nah, USC. It nah. should be Ohio State. It should be East Coast teams playing right. at 9 a.m. But if you're USC and if you're the Pac-12 and you're this late to the party, you're hoping that you can get some coverage back East because you're playing so early out West. But here's the thing. This game, San Diego State against San Jose State, didn't register for anybody because you had Saturday with USC and, and Arizona State. You had Notre Dame and Clemson. You had some really you know exciting college football action. Michigan's in huge trouble losing to Indiana. How about my oh. Pitt Panthers coming back and beating up on Florida State? Not that that's anything special. The point is, is that San Diego State, it seemed like it happened so long ago. It was Friday. It was against <laughs> San Jose State. It still just shocks me, Alex. I sent you the picture. I don't even know if you'll be able to put it up on the screen. But I took a picture of the game. Like, oh, my God. There's nobody at the game. Why are they playing it there? Yep. Okay, I get it. Listen, I'll, I, I'll make a compelling case. You ready? Here's the case for why San Diego State should be playing in Carson. Okay, Here's the case for why they should be. One. It's a really nice little football stadium, soccer stadium, and there's nobody in there. So what does it matter if they're playing here or there? Okay. Two, it's a grass field. San Diego State can put down on the grass field their logo, and they can put their logos in the end zone, which means that even though there's nobody there, people who are watching on TV, the very few of us, I mean, the very few of us that watch San Diego State versus San Jose State on the CBS Sports Network, the very few of us that watch that game, we think it's a San Diego State home game because their logos are on the field. And because it's grass, you can get rid of those logos real quick and you can put the Galaxy stuff up. I don't even know if they're still playing or if their season's over. Alex, do you know? Still playing. Okay. So on a turf field, if they were playing at um, you know some junior college, Southwestern Junior College, they can't just put down the San Diego State logo at midfield. They could do it at USD. I don't see any reason why they couldn't. Well, then you would make the argument, yeah, but from a TV perspective, 
USD is not, is not set up to accommodate a CBS or an ESPN network telecast, whereas they are up at the, the stadium at the Galaxy call home. There are legit reasons why you would say it's good to play there, but it is weird. I mean, it's, it's super strange, you know, welcome tonight to Carson, California at dignity sports health park here in LA, the home of the LA galaxy. And tonight the home of the San Diego state Aztecs, where they host the San Jose state Spartans. Think about that Two mid-major schools from a mid-major conference playing not at either's hometown, <laughs> but in the big city of LA and San Jose state comes south and beats San Diego state. Very, very embarrassing. Now, uh, everything that you just said to qualify why you would try to explain why it, why you understand all those things could have been done here. They just could have been. A little conversation with the network, a little conversation with CBS or ESPN, and you could have superimposed San Diego State in the end zone and San Diego State at the midfield. They do it all the time. No, no, I do it all the time. I I totally disagree. I'm going to totally disagree. I I, I don't think networks put ads on football fields, they don't superimpose team logos. It's not their responsibility to do it. And, And I would listen, I would just argue this. Qualcomm Stadium was a very difficult place to televise a football game in comparison to say um, what what they have at Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara. The new stadiums are built for the new technology for television. The old stadiums were not. It was always a headache for the networks to broadcast at Qualcomm or at uh, where the Raiders called home, the Coliseum. But it's a pleasure when they get to these new stadiums and everything is just plug and play. It would be very hard for a television network to go to Southwestern Community College or to go to USD where they're not set up to accommodate television trucks. They are in Carson. Doesn't mean that you're not right, John. I mean, they could have very easily have played these games. They could have very easily have televised these games, even without superimposing 50-yard line logos or end zones. They could have played these games in San Diego. What does it matter if there's nobody in the house? where they played. I just find it's it really super bizarre, but let me ask you guys this question. Since you guys are down in North park, when was the last time you've driven by Qualcomm stadium? Yesterday. Uh, I went, I was going around that area and it's, it's, it is, it's happening. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, it is dug up, man. That parking lot is, is not a parking lot. It is a construction zone. It is really happening, dude. Brown, you seen it lately? I've not seen it in over like uh, maybe a month. Dude, I saw a video yesterday on Twitter. They're taking down the circular walkways at Qualcomm Stadium. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yep. Dude, it's coming down. I mean, I don't the know when. coming down. Yeah, I don't know when the implosion <laughs> is happening. Like, I don't know when the big part of it actually comes crumbling to the ground and smoke flies and they do a live implosion. I don't know when that happens. But, dude, they're taking this stadium down. And what's super weird about the whole thing is when San Diego State goes to L.A., plays in Carson, loses to San Jose State under the radar. Most people don't even realize it. They're they, that they're building a new stadium down there for a mid-major college football team. And the only thing that bothers me in all of it is, is that we could have had more and we chose to have less. San Diego State at the time of, of all this discussion about a new football stadium, man, were they bragging, we are an annual top 25 program. Not really. You were for a few years. And they kept saying, we don't want to play in a soccer stadium. We want to play in a football stadium. Yet the athletic director keeps showing up at all these soccer stadiums where the LAFC plays, where the LA Galaxy play. And now they're playing in one of these soccer stadiums. The unfortunate part is, is as the Chargers are now playing in the Rams stadium and as San Diego State is getting a new football stadium built for their middle of the road, mid-major program, we could have had football and soccer in the exact same stadium, and we chose one or the other rather than and, rather than both. Because we don't think large in this town. You've been here long enough to know Listen, that, dude. Man. We're still trying to figure out Seaport Village. We're still we we we're like I think the Measure E is going to court to see if it is if it's even valid to put a, a tall building there now. <laughs> I mean, it's just like this town thinks so small, 
And l- at least we even got this done. I think the three of us are surprised that that's getting done. I still am. I know I am. And I mean, we, we can all make the jokes that we want to believe it when we see it. Just drive by. It's happening. So I, I, I just think this town makes – it's just a small – town mentality and a large ass city if the best thing that they get out of that stadium is that you can have waterfront rename itself and have it there or that you can do the other uh 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 what was the other what was the other music festival that was here was waterfront and kaboo if you Wonderful. can move those to that stadium Wonderful. and hold them in there and hold them around in the parking lot and surrounding areas that's the best thing you can get out of that stadium at this point because nobody gonna be going there for football ain't nobody gonna be going there for football I hope that they can find an MLS team and put them in there. I hope that that can work out at some point. I mean, when you look at when you look at Dignity Health Sports Park, I think if you take out the bleacher seats, that's what they're building. They're building something that size that can technically be expanded, but most likely will never not will be. be. So that's what they're building. They're not building a. I mean, listen, anything's better than Qualcomm, in my opinion. But they're not building some state of the art like dope crazy sofi looking thing even at that size they're just building a little thirty thousand basic stadium that, that's what we're question. getting let me ask you a question first year of this stadium regardless of how good or not good san diego state football is san diego state hosts san jose state in their brand new football stadium thirty three thousand people show up yes or no yes depends the first game the first no, no, game yeah no, no no first year and it's the third game of the season, and San Diego State's two and zero, and San Jose State's two and zero. Thirty three thousand people show up in a San Jose State San Diego State game in San Diego. No, no. When's the first year? This year, twenty twenty one. No, because it's not gonna be nobody there. But maybe. All right, twenty twenty two. Maybe I don't know. Maybe no. I don't know. It's just hard to believe that San Diego State could lose to San Jose State in Dignity Health Sports Park, the home of the LA Galaxy. It's just the whole thing is bizarre. All right, stick around. Lots more to get to. We got John Clayton around the corner, our NFL insider. Plus. Power rankings and garbage rankings on the way. Hey, everybody. It is a Tuesday afternoon. Alex, I already like what you've done here. And Browner, I'm going to be curious to see your commentary. But Alex has posted already from a question that we organically got to earlier today. And he posted this way on Sided. Price does not matter. Who has the best burger? Early indications in and out at 40%, five guys at 20%, and my vote for Shake Shack at 40%. So we've got ourselves a real battle going here. Browner, have you voted yet? I'm going right now. And you know, my favorite part about it is in the question I said, price does not matter. And the first comment under Shake Shack, the value you get at in and out is much better. <laughs> 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 it's like read the question man mm-hmm. voter yeah. fraud all right well already people have decided to jump in on this question what is the best burger price doesn't matter i got shake shack we should probably do this we should probably get a shake shack an in and out and a five guys and sit down and have a, a full-on burger challenge. Let me ask you a question. When you say you door dash this, what, how long did that door dash take? Because when you door dash French fries, mm-hmm. those fries are gone. Like, they're just shot. Like, they're not going to be that good when they get Any home. Any delivery. Fr- this yeah. is why I don't understand what's happening with fries. Any delivery fry will be terrible if it's not across yep. the street from your house. Yep. It, it's, it's not, not going to work. It's not going to work. You get a fry in a bag. You drive it two minutes. It's done. Once the heat leaves the French fry, unless it's like <laughs> perfectly crisp, it's it's done. In and Out's got the worst fries known to man. They shouldn't even make them anymore. Period. <laughs> they should start serving pizza instead of instead of burgers and fries. They're god awful. Okay, so after after McDonald's, Five Guys Cajun fries, mm, fantastic thing. Shake Shack, the cheese fries, mm, great thing. I, I I just just DoorDash, delivery DoorDash, fry, Uber, Uber, Uber Eats, whatever it is that you use. I'm not trying to discriminate against you. I'm just saying literally, if you order fries to go or delivery, they suck. Yeah, they, they they just, I, I gotta admit, boo 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 is what they're. Hey Browner, I like the way, you, the way you kissed your hands when you when you tell Chef's everybody kiss? how much you like. It was like very Jameis Winston, like like he's eating the W. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, listen, let me say that I want to get to my power rankings and my garbage rankings Uh-oh. in the NFL, but I will tell you that today 
They're being brought to you by Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, my main man, Gary Cooper, aka Koopa Loop. He has helped thousands of great friends over the past 20 years save a whole lot of money refinancing their homes. But for the longest time, I mean forever, even going through the recession of eight, nine, and coming out of it in 10, we kept hearing about historic low rates. Well, the world is crazy. And those historically low rates have gotten historically lower. You know, like the Chargers are historically bad when it comes to choking away games, or the Seattle Seahawks defense is historically bad, statistically speaking. Right now, still historic lows when it comes to interest rates, which means for many people, you might be trying to buy more house because you can get a better loan. For other people, it might mean that you're selling your house because you can get more for it. Or maybe for other people, it just means refinancing your house to save yourself a whole bunch of money. Whatever transaction it is you would like to discuss before you make a decision, call our guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Okay. Big Brown, are you okay. ready for the garbage rankings and the power rankings this week? From the NFL. What do you say? I already feel like something bad is about to happen in these garbage rankings. Why do you feel that way? Because I but Alex's response when you say garbage rankings, and he was like, uh oh. What do you mean? What does that mean exactly? You try to, I do it. Listen, I think I, I think I smell what's coming. Go ahead. <laughs> let's, let's hear him. I think I smell what's coming. What do you smell? I mean, you smell the burgers? No, no, no. I wish I smelled one of them burgers right now. Uh, be I want a burger so bad right them. now. I want a burger. Get it, get it so delivered. Get some fries. Mm. Can't believe people even deliver fries. What a even burgers. Even idea. burgers when you get delivered, like the bun can become really soggy and ruin the burger too. That's true. I, I, but, but I gotta say, worse I, than a fry. I'm impressed though with these delivery services because I don't use them that often at all. But about a week ago or so, the GF ordered Thai food. From, I'm cool uh, with that. Oh, you are. Yeah, because it comes in a box, it's heat sealed basically, or it comes in a package that's like plastic topped. Like that stuff, you're you can that can take an hour to get to you, it'd still be good. Yeah. This guy um dropped it at the house. So he he comes over with this Thai food, right? He's got this rectangular sort of box, kind of low cut, rings the doorbell, leaves. I go open the door, there's the food sitting on the step, right? I go to pick this thing up, and it's the most clumsy box i'm telling you it was like four feet long like two feet wide there's like 35 pounds of thai food in there you know and i'm trying to freaking balance this thing like oh shit, oh man i don't know i'm gonna bring it in i'm gonna drop it i don't know how this guy got it from the car to the door but i'm telling you it was smoking hot you know what okay another side question i don't know why my mind's going this way what is like the most embarrassing thing that you've got delivered to your house like what like what I mean by that is like, because there's like liquor store options. So you could order like a bag of chips and a Coke delivered to your house. Like, do you guys have some, or has it always just been like a solid meal that you've ordered? Dude, anybody who orders, and I have not done this because I've, like I said, I rarely use these services. Anybody who orders fast food like McDonald's, as an example, if you order oh. McDonald's by DoorDash, dude, that's, that's messed up in my opinion. So okay. let me go ahead and tell you okay. my most embarrassing one. Mm-hmm. I ordered two McFlurries. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I ordered two McFlurries Yo! and a large fry, not once, but twice during quarantine. Oh my Get God. Why? Okay, wait. Why? Wait, wait. It was like legit, like, it was like legit quarantine time. Uh huh. And so I was you like, trusted the person who cooked it, the person who delivered it. You trusted them. No, it was my yourself. mentality was just like, I'm just not leaving my house. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't that I didn't trust these people. Or, I was just like, it was like when, when like, you, you just didn't leave your house, right? It was like mm -hmm. when you, if you got 400 steps, that was a lot. Like, that was the kind of day <laughs> I was having. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's, it was hot. Let's do it. So I did that. And I, and I am not proud of it. I'm not trying. Like, it is embarrassing that I did it. But it, I'll tell you what. I'll do it again. Mm. I'll do it oh again. My God. I don't know McFlurry how they did it. I don't know how they did it. That McFlurry showed up here. It was still cold. Nothing yeah. melted. Fries were still warm. And I'm over here talking trash about how fries are terrible. Everything was perfect. All right. I have a question. 
How much do you recall it costing for two McFlurries and a fries? It was like 14 bucks, 15 bucks. And if you went to McDonald's and you got it at a drive through, how much would it have been? I had 10, like 12 bucks. Yeah, that's yeah, not so bad. That wasn't so bad. Uh, last Sunday. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, oh God! We, we Something already, else is coming here. What's coming? No, next? we already told you that we DoorDash KFC. I told you guys that last week. Uh, my buddy, I don't even know how we started talking about that, but I did order. Uh, I DoorDash a twelve pack, <laughs> just a twelve pack. Oh my God! Yeah. Twelve pack of what? A beer. What? Lagunitas IPA. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are the most, those are the two things where I was like, probably could have got up and got that myself. Gosh, you yeah. DoorDashed a twelve pack of beer. Lazy at least work mofo. At least God. work the calories off going to you know get it. You know what's Jeez. funny is that I I mean I, whatever. I live like three blocks. <laughs> I live like three blocks from Vaughn's. Easily could have walked there. <laughs> God, lazy uh, ass mofo. Yeah. Oh. Yep. COVID is yeah. destroying you, man. Man, oh man. The kid hasn't stood it's up time, in months. Yeah. It's time for you to start driving back to Solana Beach every day for work, man. I feel like prof- <laughs> I feel like Professor an intervention for you. I feel like Professor X, dude, I got a blanket and this chair. Just wheel me around. <laughs> you guys aren't gonna answer the question. You guys just get meals, huh? I, I swear to you, dude. I've only used these these no drunk munchies twice. I, I one time tried to get DoorDash. There's a PB, there's a there's like a fried chicken place in PB that's supposed to be like Nashville Is style. Is it like new? I don't know what it's called. Yeah, I heard about no, it. it's uh it's across it's next to a sushi place. It's right across the street from that McDonald's. Like Dave's chicken or something? Something, something like, like that. Something like that, yeah. 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 So I ordered from there and um I uh I, I no re- way it got there hot. No, so wait, no, it did it never even got here. So like I'm watching <laughs> on the app, like, okay, here any second, and it never shows up. So I wind up calling the driver and I'm like, Hello, are you coming? She was a, an Asian woman who spoke no English, right? So my English, her Chinese. It wasn't going anywhere. I wound up having to call DoorDash and go, dude, I spent like 150 bucks on this food. It never got here. They wound up crediting my account. Nice. I saw one on the internet where this woman delivered somebody Cheesecake Factory, mm-hmm. set it down, took a picture of it, picked it up and left with it. Like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> come on. Like, yeah, oh, she didn't man. even ring the people's doorbell. Man. I guess they had like a rain camera. <laughs> she literally set it down, took a picture of it like she left it. And picked it up and walked away with it. I was like, "Hey, man, free lunch." Besides the beer, the last thing I ordered, uh, really, I like, I'll, I, I just won't order food anymore through those because it just, it was so bad that I ordered Cheesecake Factory a couple months ago, and it was so cold, and it took so Ooh. long. I was like, and it was so expensive, and I was like, I'm never ordering DoorDash food again, ever. Yeah, yeah. sober at least. Yeah, right. Well, unless you need a couple of McFlurries and some fries <laughs> or a twelve pack. Yeah, right. All right, let me do this. Let me get you my my garbage rankings and my power rankings because it is Tuesday. We have just wrapped up. Is it week nine of the NFL season? I believe it was week nine. And so here we go. These are the worst five teams in the NFL, and these are the top five teams in the NFL. And I caution everybody, before you get judgmental and before you shame me on my power rankings and my garbage rankings, just remember, Browner, it's a week to week league, my dog. That's all I'm <laughs> saying, bro. Snap. You better not. You better snap. You better not. Vikings better be in the top five then. At of what? number 28, of what? Of, hmm. At number 28, these are the worst five teams in the NFL after week nine of the NFL season. At number 28, Alex. The Chicago Bears. Oh, <laughs> I, oh, you, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, let's take a look at the Chicago Bears, oh, shall we? I knew this was going to happen. I knew you were going to do this. I knew it. In week one, the Chicago Bears beat the Detroit Lions. We know they're not very good. In week two, they beat the New York Giants. We know they're terrible. In week three, they beat the Atlanta Falcons, which are not a good football team. And you know what? At 3-0, you're thinking to yourself, okay, the Bears are pretty good. Then they lost to the Colts, and the Colts aren't good at all. And then they beat the Buccaneers. And we went, well, that's interesting because the Buccaneers actually had a big lead, and Chicago came back. You know what? They're 4-1. and one. Maybe we should think the Bears are that's, good. That's the game where I was like, okay, I'm talking trash about the Bears, but m- maybe. That's the only game where I was like, maybe. And then? 
And then they beat the Panthers and they were five and one and you're going five and one, the Chicago bears. Wow. Like, I don't really think they're very good, but they're five and one. So you got to give them credit. Not just five and one, Scott, five and one heading to LA for the chance at the one seat of the NFC. Right. And then Monday night football against the Rams loss game against the saints loss game against the Titans this past weekend loss. And all of a sudden, from five and one to five and four, and coming up against that juggernaut that is the, the Minnesota red, Vikings, the red hot Dalvin Cook and Minnesota Vikings. Woo, I've been no reading one, articles about Dalvin Cook getting MVP votes. So, in a week to week league, after three straight losses, when they were looking at the number one seed just three weeks ago, and now they're out of the playoffs, coming in at number 28 the fifth worst team in the entire NFL leading off the garbage rankings, Browners, Chicago bears, Browner, any thoughts and feedback? Hey, I know why you did that. I'm not even going to play into it. I'm not even going to play into it. What I will tell you is this. We've struggled the last couple of games. I get that. We're going to get this win on Monday night against the lowly Minnesota Vikings. And if Alex ready to put some of that bet up, because listen, this is what happened. This is why I don't like to do this on this show. As soon as I get to start talking, I start getting pissed off. And now y'all got me mad. Okay, now I'm ready to bet. So if Alex, you ready You ready to put your money where your mouth is, okay? You ready to put your hustle where your mouth is? You really believe in the red hot Dalvin Cook MVP Vikings? Put it up. Put it up. Sure. All right. Put it up. Same bet. Right. Sure. Put it up. Whatever. Uh-huh. But if the but if the Vikings lose, who's directing the show that day? Because I can't do both. Eat, eat it in the last segment. That's a good idea. But who's going to edit eat it the in show? The last segment. Who's going to post the show? <laughs> Just put it up, raw dog. Hey, listen, dude. No edit. Listen, Browner, raw Browner, dog. Browner handled Browner handled that hot sauce way better than I will handle that hot sauce. But I will take that bet. But I will just let you guys know that on Tuesday, that show may not make it to air. All right. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Browner's garbage bears against Alex's red hot Vikings. Oh, Kirk Cousins on Monday night. Well, this is not going to go well. How do we already know get, this. How, how do we even get to number five? We still in the playoff race. You know what? We seven. Week to week we league. In the NFC. You said it's a week to week league. You got to give Cam Newton credit. We could bash the Bears week to week league. All right. You're right. You're right. Three straight you're right. Losses. Use my own words against me. All right. So look, um, now Bears versus Vikings, and it's another. <laughs> I like how he has the hot sauce just next to him, ready yeah. to go. Dude. Yeah, it's another hot sauce challenge. All right. I like it. I like it. Oh. Alex is not <sighs> looking forward to it. I mean, this listen, I know, the, I, I know my team, but I will, I will do it for the show. I'll do it. All right, here we go. Number 29, the fourth worst team in the NFL, the Denver Broncos. You know, this actually gives me a lot of pleasure to make the Denver Broncos this low on the list. Listen, the Atlanta Falcons are terrible. They fired their coach. They're they're using a, a head coach who was once a terrible head coach in Tampa Bay. Atlanta's so bad. Yeah, they got talent on the team, but their whole organization has fallen apart since they lost that Super Bowl game a couple of years ago to the Patriots. For the Broncos to beat the Chargers in the last second and have their quarterback dancing all over the field only to turn around and lose to the Falcons, it just reminds me that the Chargers aren't any good and the Broncos beating them didn't really mean anything. The Broncos the following week lose to Atlanta. Congratulations, Denver. You come in at number 29 this week on the garbage list. I'm fine with that. They're not good. They're just they <laughs> the fact that the Chargers even blew that lead and, and let Drew Locke. Drew Locke. By the way, the Falcons let Drew Locke also throw for like 400 yards. So they're they're bad. Bad, bad, bad. Right. I mean, the Broncos lost to a really bad Atlanta team. They're number 28 this week, or 29 rather. In at number 30 this week, please, on the garbage list, Alex. <laughs> the Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars at one and seven with a quarterback that none of us knew who he was last week. You know, you, you gave us the nick the 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 uh the hint that his name rhymes with with button, button and we couldn't <laughs> figure it out. We still couldn't figure it out. Uh, I was reading a story about the Jacksonville Jaguars when trying to decide where to put them on the garbage list. They're about to try their sixth kicker. You thought the Dallas Cowboys had trouble with quarterbacks around their fourth quarterback. The Jacksonville Jaguars are on their sixth kicker. Yeah, like that's gonna year. that's gonna fix it. Get your kicker right. 
The Jacksonville Jaguars in week one beat Phillip Rivers in his first game with the Colts, and they've lost every game since. The Titans, the Dolphins, Bengals, Texans, Lions, Chargers, and Texans again. Dude. They've lost six straight games, or Colts, seven straight, rather. The Jaguars made me made me lose my survivor pick in week one because oh. they beat the Colts. It's like, come on. Wow. Anyways, uh, still, the Texans are bad, too, because they made that kid, Nick Lutton, Jake Lutton, I forget his name, like look good for a while there. Well, there was that one play where he scored, where he's running to his left, and all of a sudden he stops and flips and runs into the end zone. You're like, wow, that was a good play. That's pretty good. But it was in a losing effort. All right, we got right. two minutes for you to wrap your garbage up. Okay, number 31, the second worst team in the entire NFL. Congratulations goes to, yep, the San Diego Chargers who play in the L.A. Rams house. The Who's Chargers, house? the Rams house. Got it. The Chargers are so bad that every week they find a way to lose. You see, they're so good that they are able to be in the game till the last play, but they're so bad that they can never finish the deal. So this past weekend, and anybody who's talking about firing Anthony Lynn, stop that nonsense, please. <laughs> don't You don't want Anthony Lynn fired. You want him remaining. He is the coach of this. He is the captain of this ship. And I personally love the losing every week. Chargers in at 31. And the biggest- This is Anthony Lynn today. I can't remember a season like this in my whole football life. It's been a very strange season. Yeah, I think we've lost every way that you can possibly lose. Oh no, no, it ain't no, over yet. No, so, no, there's still a lot yeah, of games. Plenty of time. Go. Yeah, all right. And the and the number one garbage team in the NFL this year, or at least through Week Nine, you saw them play last night. The New York Jets. They are zero and nine. They had the Patriots beat at home. The Patriots aren't very good. Uh, when you think that Joe Flacco is the quarterback and Frank Gore is the running back. Are the New York Jets in some sort of a youth movement that I missed? Man, the Jets are pathetic. But they're playing for that Trevor Lawrence pick. Hey, but, Congratulations. But, and also credit to Cam Newton for beating the worst team in the league. Congratulations, right. Cam him, Newton. Gotta give him his credit. Way to go. Gotta give him his credit, Browner. Y'all yeah, funny, huh? <laughs> you wanted today? us to give him credit. There you go, man. You got jokes today? Okay. All yeah, right. We got All jokes. Right. Uh, this don't don't put Herbert there ever again. Okay, don't do that to Herbert. All right. Don't hey, do, listen. Don't do it to the car. The garbage five being presented by Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services eight five eight three seven six twelve ninety nine. Coming up, we'll give you the top of the power rankings, the top five, and right around the corner is our man John Clayton. Stick around. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. On a Tuesday afternoon, I've just given you my garbage five. These are the, the worst five teams in the NFL. Browner didn't like number 28, which was the Chicago Bears. He mm -hmm. also didn't like number 31, which was the San Diego Chargers. Mm -mm. Seemed to be okay with the Jets at 32. They're terrible. Yeah, so you had, you had problems with two-fifths of my garbage five. I'll, I'll go with that. But now, let's flip the entire thing. Let's go from the worst teams in the NFL, the garbage five, to the top of the power rankings. Power rankings today being brought to us by Seven Mile Casino. SevenMileCasino.com. Hey, look, you want to have a good time? You want to be a big winner? You want to still get out there and live your life and you want to do it in a safe environment? Go visit Seven Mile Casino in their website, sevenmilecasino.com. You can read all about what they've done to make the casino as safe as possible. And if you've not been to Seven Mile Casino, but you're hearing me right now and you're going, that does sound like fun. When was the last time you were in a casino? I mean, I can't even remember other than going down to Seven Mile just to tour and hang out with the owners and, and see what they've built outside the, the big tent and pumping in the fresh air and the tables that are outside and the partitions in between. I mean, I, Somebody told me recently they were in Vegas. They said it was pretty quiet, although active. When was the last time you were in a casino playing cards? Oy. Dude, 2017? Oh, man. Yeah, it's been a while. I me. know. Yeah. I mean, for me, I want to feel like it was like late 2018. So look, here's, a, here's what I'm saying. If you want to go and you want to play table games, you want to have a great time, you want to do it in a safe and healthy environment, you want to do it where the company has really, really tried everything that they know that they can do to keep you healthy and safe and deal with all kinds of COVID protocols, Seven Mile Casino is your place. SevenMileCasino.com. Minutes from downtown San Diego. You can play, you can play hard. 
You can breathe easy and you can have a hell of a lot of fun. Seven mile casino. All right. Nice. The power rankings. Power rankings this week in the NFL. Here we go. At number five this week, Alex, here we have the Tennessee Titans. Now, a few weeks ago, I had the Tennessee Titans as the number one team in the NFL. I really mm -hmm. did. I thought Tennessee mm -hmm. was really good. And then things didn't go so well. But the Tennessee Titans coming off a loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a loss that you know was just about a missed field goal at the end of the game, and then a loss against the Cincinnati Bengals, which is the most impressive win of Joe Burrow's young career. But a win against the Chicago Bears. Not a great team. Not a very yeah. not a very good team. So how so okay. So wait, wait, how how do you get in the top five of your power rankings by beating the team in your bottom five? I'm so confused. I'm gonna explain how. I'm glad you asked. Thank you, Browner. Thank you for that. You're going to see a pattern here in the Power Five. And I, at the end of it, I think you'll understand what the pattern is. Okay. And then, you'll under, and then you'll understand why Tennessee makes it in at number five. Just keep in mind, there's a pattern here. All right. And, and you're going to understand why Tennessee's at number five. Now, I know you're probably not happy because you just look at it as if I'm just taking a shot at you. I've I've put in sh I've put your Bears in at 28, and I've put the team that beat them in at number five. I mean, you, this probably feels personal to you, doesn't it? After this team lost to the Bengals, come on. But okay, okay, okay. Oh, but the Bengals <laughs> didn't make. But the Bengals didn't make the list. But okay, cool. Gotcha. Two wins. Bengals didn't make the list. Got it. Okay, I'm following. I'm with you. All right. Number four. Number four this week on the power rankings, the Buffalo Bills. Now, Buffalo, earlier in the season, again, a team I was really high on. Then I kind of got down on the Buffalo Bills, but they're 7-2. and two. They are two games ahead. Well, actually, I guess they're considered one and a half games ahead of the Miami Dolphins. I don't think anybody in the AFC East at this stage of the game has to worry about the New England Patriots. So the Bills look like the best team overall in the AFC East. The win this past weekend against the Seahawks was impressive. The Seahawks are good on offense. They're historically bad on defense. So when we see that Buffalo puts up 44 points against Seattle, it's kind of impressive. But on the other hand, Seattle scoring 34 points is not so great. I still think Buffalo is a, an upper echelon team in the AFC. They're not great. They're pretty good. But when you look at the rest of this power ranking, you're going to see a pattern again, and you're going to understand why I've got Tennessee at five and now Buffalo at four. Good win against Seattle this past weekend at home. Number three this week on the power rankings, Alex, the, the Baltimore Ravens. So the Ravens the week before had lost to Pittsburgh, didn't look very good. Then the following week, played against Indianapolis, who was all of a sudden starting to think that they were pretty good. And then they found out, here's the deal. The AFC South is not that good of a division. Tennessee's kind of the only tough guy team in that division. Indianapolis has a good offensive line. They have a good defense. They've got Phillip now, who's kind of the older, you know, kind of previous generation style quarterback. Jacksonville stinks. Houston stinks. That division isn't good enough. Tennessee has been built to compete with Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Tennessee was not built to compete with Indianapolis. Tennessee um, is good. They're not great. Baltimore is better, but they're not better than Pittsburgh. Baltimore, with their win over Indianapolis, works their way back into the power rankings. I've got them in at number three. Hold on. So now let yeah. me get this straight. Mm -hmm. only oh, he's whispering. Teams. He's whispering. It's real. There's only, <laughs> <laughs> there's only two teams left, right? So I know you're not going to leave Drew Brees out this list. And if you do, if you don't leave Drew Brees out this list, that means Pittsburgh or Kansas City's out of this list because there's only two teams left. So now we all got a problem. Please continue. Again, I told you there's a pattern to this list this week. There's a pattern to the power rankings. Power rankings being presented by 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. In at number two this week in the power rankings, the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So the Steelers, the only unbeaten team in the league, the Steelers find ways to hold on and win. The Steelers are good, but there are plenty of people out there that are still not buying them because it's a missed field goal against Tennessee. It's a couple of turnovers against Baltimore. Um, it's it's Dallas who's wounded and down to their fourth string quarterback and, and Pittsburgh just sort of skates by. I like Pittsburgh because they find ways to win or escape or whatever you want to say. They're unbeaten. Big Ben going on the COVID list today, even though he doesn't have a positive test that we know of. Well, he sat next next to Vance McDonald on the airplane, and they share the lockers are together. So, all right. So we'll find out if Big Ben gets it because his other teammate there that you just mentioned, he's got a positive test. As much as Pittsburgh's undefeated, and the automatic uh, inclination would be to put them as number one. I don't have them as number one, at least not this week. You've just gotten by the last three weeks. You just barely got by a beat up Dallas Cowboy team. You're good. You're good enough to be in the top five. But after this week, you're not good enough to be number one. Pittsburgh, number two on the power rankings. Browner, what do you think is number one right now? What, you, what is going through your mind right, listen, right now? Listen, nothing's going to make you happier than to put Drew Brees at the top of this list. And we, listen, full disclosure to people, I have no idea what's on either one of these lists before we do these on the show. And I think they do it on purpose. No, I'm the only one, but I don't help. I just make the, I laugh or cry or get upset as I build this, this graphic. I don't know either. I'm telling you right now, Drew Brees is going to be number one on this list with the New Orleans Saints, and I might flip this table over. Okay. In it, number one. Okay. Remember, a th there's a pattern to this list. There's a pattern. I can't wait to hear it. Well, you'll maybe you'll be able to figure it out, I think. Here, it seems like voter fraud to me. All right. You got Tennessee at five, bu Buffalo at four, Baltimore at three, Pittsburgh at two. And the number one team this week on my NFL power rankings, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs have one loss this year. It's to the Raiders. That's a great win for the Raiders. It's a division loss for the Chiefs. It's not like terribly embarrassing like San Diego State losing to San Jose State, but it's still not a great loss. It's not like they lost to Pittsburgh or to a Baltimore. They lost to a Raider team that's just barely good enough to sneak by the Chargers. So look, the Chiefs, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the Kansas City has been quiet this year. They beat the Texans, okay. They came back and beat the Chargers. They did beat the Ravens, beat the Patriots, who we don't think is very good. Lost to the Raiders, who we think are kind of middle of the road. They did beat the Bills, who now we think are good. They did beat the Broncos, who I don't think much of. Jets are garbage, and Panthers kind of lower on the radar. I feel like Kansas City has run off this this eight and one uh, season so far and has just done it quietly. Everybody knows about the numbers Mahomes puts up and they know about all the skill guys there, but I haven't seen the chiefs on like the big national game. Have you guys like, when was the last time the chiefs were on with Jim Nance and Tony Romo or, or the number one Fox team or Sunday night with Al Michaels or even Monday night. I'm just trying to remember getting a lot of exposure to the chiefs. They're the super bowl champs. They've got one of the top two quarterbacks in the NFL, and I just feel like Kansas City's doing it under the radar. But you know what? The consistency factor and and Pittsburgh going and barely getting by the Cowboys, I'm re-elevating the Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs, to number one in my power rankings. Now, Browner, look at these rankings. Tennessee, Buffalo, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, top five teams in the NFL. What's the pattern? Uh, other than they're all in the AFC, I don't know. That's it. That's exactly it. The NFC doesn't have a team yet that I think belongs amongst this group, at least after this past week. I think that Tampa Bay has been, um, I believe Tampa Bay was one of the top teams in the league. After getting beaten down by New Orleans, I don't. New Orleans, I have not believed in this year nearly as much as I would have in years past. So even though New Orleans destroyed Tampa Bay, I don't think either of those teams are as good as these AFC teams. I'm looking around the rest of the NFC. Seattle got blasted by Buffalo. Arizona, who I thought was pretty good, got beat by Miami. 
Uh, the Green Bay Packers are okay. I don't think they're that good. And nobody from the NFC East stands out. So my entire top five in my power ranking this week goes all to AFC teams. By the way, the Chiefs do have two primetime games coming up. They're on a bye week this week, but then primetime versus the Raiders. And then they play at Tampa, which is not primetime. Then they have primetime again versus the, the Broncos. And then they play the Dolphins and the Saints. So I think you'll be seeing a lot more of the Chiefs coming up. I, they have to find a way to make that Tampa Bay, Kansas City game primetime. I don't care what they got to well, do. Sure they gotta flexed. Out. I'm sure yeah. it'll get flexed. I'm sure it'll get flexed. You got to flex that in somewhere. I don't so care what do you think about there. that? There's not, there's not one NFC team. That um, makes it into my top five. I suppose if you wanted to argue and say, well, you know, Tennessee really, maybe New Orleans belongs there. But seriously, like when you think of who is the number one team in the NFC right now, Tampa, okay. New Orleans, Seattle, Arizona, who who do you think, Green Bay, who do you think is the best team in the NFC? I would begrudgingly say Green Bay. I can't say Seattle because they don't play any defense. And other than uh, Green Bay getting crushed by Tampa Bay that one time, they've been pretty consistent, and Aaron Rodgers has been great. I would definitely say that they're better than the Titans, again, who lost to the Bengals, man. So, again, but in a week-to-week league, I, I would I would say that Green Bay deserves to be number five. Going forward, going forward from this point forward, after what happened last week, it's the Saints, just because they got, they're healthy again. Uh, Michael Thomas is a big difference maker. Emmanuel Sanders got the got the Rona. He's good. They actually do play defense, which is a big dip, which is what That's separates true. them from every other NFC team. Because the Packers, you're gonna have to score 35, but it's not that hard to score 35 against them. And you can say the same thing, obviously, about the Bucks now and whoever else is in the end of the Rams. Rams are not a threat. There's just so many like mediocre defenses in the NFC that I think that's what separates the NFC or the Saints from everybody else. Mm-hmm. If only Drew Brees could throw longer than 10 yards, I mean, they would be unstoppable. Well, my power rankings this week, I went all AFC teams because, honestly, I don't think Green Bay's that good. I don't think Seattle's that good. I'm not sold yet on New Orleans. Tampa Bay, I'm clearly not that – I don't believe that much in. Arizona, I was still way on the fence on. After Miami, though, I'm, I'm, I think Miami's actually getting better, like pretty good. Like Miami could be starting to crack – that top five here pretty soon, but I just well, the don't screw it up against the chargers. Right. I just, right. Chargers and dolphins this week. If the Dolphins, and you know who I blame for Tampa? Sorry to interrupt. You. I didn't mean to, but you know, it's, I get this vibe from Bruce Arians that he buys into his own hype or the hype around oh, himself yeah. and his team, because there's no reason that the buck should have got destroyed the way they did, but they started buying into their own flavor of their juice. And they, I, I, they just did not look prepared, and that I don't think that's a Brady thing. I just think that's an overall. We're a new team to winning. Bruce is 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 here, and he kind of that's the, just the vibe I get from Bruce. It could just be totally made up in my head, but that's why I think the Bucks are are going to be inconsistent going forward. They'll be in the playoffs. They'll win nine ten games, but they're just in, inconsistent. I think their consistency will start to show when they begin to run the ball more. I don't, I don't understand they can have those two guys in the backfield and not have a balanced attack when Kansas City's throwing the ball 30 to 32 times a game. If they can balance their attack, then every team can balance their attack. I don't see why Tom Brady should be throwing the ball that many times. All right, there you go. You have your garbage rankings. You've got your power rankings. Garbage rankings this week uh, were brought to us by Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services and power rankings this week being brought to us by Seven Mile Casino. Now, today is the 245th birthday of the United States Marine Corps, and tomorrow is Veterans Day. Me and Brown are tomorrow afternoon, 1.30. We will be at Tory Holistics, where they are celebrating Veterans Day with our friends from the Hellman Valley Growing Company. And we'll talk more about that because now it is time for Grande and the highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. You guys know what to do. You go to kaplanandcrew.com. You scroll down a little bit and you click on the Tory Holistics banner. And it takes you to the page that gets you 20% off your next purchase at Tory Holistics with a minimum $75 purchase. So... You spend 75 bucks, you put in the promo code 1090 at checkout, and then bam, 20% off. Today's Tuesday, so topical Tuesdays, all topicals, an extra 15% off. And while you're there, tomorrow you might run into Scott and Browner because of the HVGC guys being there, right, Scott? Yep. So 
HVGC, and here's the website, HVG, Hellman Valley Growing, uh, or Growers, Hellman Valley Growers Company, HVGcompany.com. You can read about who HVGC is. You can uh, buy some of their apparel. You can read about what it is that they're doing with military veterans and cannabis. Uh, these guys, all former Marines, will be at Tory Holistics at 1.30 on Wednesday, Veterans Day. So if you're taking a lunch break or if you want to get out of your house for a little while and you want to come to Tory Holistics, fist bump, elbow, don't touch, say thank you, salute, come into the store, buy some of their products, save money using our promo code, Tory Holistics, Hellman Valley Growers Company, Tomorrow, Veterans Day, 1.30 p.m. Me and Brown are both there. If you want to make it into our social media feed, you want to be on our Twitter videos, our Facebook videos, we'll be there tomorrow. Brown, are you excited about this or what? I think this is going to be awesome. It's come down, say what's up. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of y'all in a long time. So come down, right. touch elbows, man. Come up, come down, hang out with us. <laughs> keep your masks on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your mask on, touch elbows. All right, elbows. here we go. Right. Scott, you know all about Iron Man's. You did one in Hawaii. You did one the other day, kind of. Uh, this, right, this right here. Is a really cool story. This is Chris Nikic. He is the first person with Down syndrome to complete an Ironman triathlon ever. Guinness World Records recognized his accomplishment. He did the 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, 26.2 run, and he did it at the Florida competition in Panama City Beach. He made it in 16 hours and 16 minutes and nine seconds. That's 14 minutes under the 17 hour cutoff but he did it. It also says that Nikic fell off his bike and was attacked by ants at a nutrition stop, but he pushed through. And uh, a lot of this stuff was uh, documented by the special Olympics, but shout out to him. The first ever person to complete an Ironman with down syndrome. So there've been a lot of people who've done Ironmans with, uh, with physical issues, you know, below knee amputees, above knee amputees, people running on prosthetic legs, people with you know, missing arms, all kinds of physical disabilities, but for somebody to finish the Ironman who has down syndrome, uh, I don't know how he did it. Like, I, I don't know enough of the story. I I've, I've been seeing a lot of it, but I don't know. If, I see there's a guide next to him at the finish line. I don't know if somebody swam with this young man, if somebody rode bikes with the guy, if somebody ran the entire marathon, I'm telling you, if you are a completely able-bodied person and you can do the Ironman, it's incredible. The fact that this young kid has Down syndrome, man, congratulations to you. You know, Alex, you mentioned that I just recently did an Ironman. Not exactly. Mine was called an Ironman-ish. I just got this trophy, by the way. Take a look at this trophy to add to my trophy shelf right here. Nice. Ironman-ish. <laughs> yeah. Ironman-ish That's for nice. Challenge Athletes Foundation. So, hey, congratulations to that kid. Because let me tell you something. You train for a year, you brag for the rest of your life. And for that kid, wow, that is super cool. Super cool. All right, for those of you that are still with us here on podcast, man, oh man, John Clayton loves to come after Browner. Love that. Dude, that's becoming a theme on this show. I like I, it, though. It's good. It keeps I me mean, sharp. You know why, though, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I like it, though. I like it, though. Okay. I, I like it, though. That's my whole thing. It keeps me sharp. Mm. Always. But oh, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Yeah, I, that's one thing I'm really like. I'm really impressed by you, man, is because – like the things that you say are really hard to come up with sometimes. So like <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, man. <laughs> oh, that's great. If this, listen, man, if this doesn't work out for us, I, well, I'm going to send all these tapes to skip as like this, is who you need on your team, man, this is who you need helping you come up with these takes. Right. These are fire. Right. Dude, you could be a, fire, you, but fire. Yeah. You could be a writer for skip Bayless. <laughs> or hey, any man, one of those I mean, dude, you could be a host on these shows. You're so like these, are, like the stuff that you say sometimes. Hot damn, take machine, dude. baby. Because it's Hot it's really machine. like it's it's one of the things that because you literally like, I was I was very impressed by how you were defending your Joe Burrow take, but at the same time like flipped it to then defend Justin Herbert, even though you said the exact same thing in two different connotations. Like that's impressive. Like how I slid that in there? That's, that's very so, impressive. Why are you so hung up on Joe Burrow being a bust when you know that's not the case? Why Why can't you just admit when you're wrong? Look, man, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't see it. I, he gets a lot of credit right now because it's a rookie season and he's on the Bengals and everybody's like, oh, look how good he is. I'm telling you, man, in two or three years, people are like, oh, that Joe Burrow, I don't know about him. 
I'm telling you. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. He said that he hey. said that like he chose Clemson to win the national title. He said that all these things about Joe Burrow last year that didn't pan out either. So like the thing about the thing about when you become a hot take machine mm-hmm. is that even though you know that you're saying ridiculous things, you have to pretend right. and you have to go with it, which I respect ah. because listen, I just take the L's. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, you got to drown me. Uh-uh. Yeah, hey, you, literally, you literally have to burn Browner with his takes for him to stop That's believing. Right. I love and you know, the mo- that. The, you know the, you know when the Burrow thing will, will change? Because this guy can go into the Hall of Fame and Browner will be like, never saw it. The moment he puts the Bears jersey on. Oh, yeah. Best, best player ever. Mm-hmm. That's a different conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He in-house then at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hey, listen, before we roll, I do want to say to all the guys out there, um, and thank you for those of you that have bought um, Manscaped products. Shout out. Yeah. You know, I, I, we get a report from the guys at Manscaped as to how we're doing. And um, I got this report from them last week that uh, showed us how many products our audience bought using our promo code, Great Friends. And I think I told you this from the very beginning, but in this new model of podcasting, we are not um, being paid for ads. We're being paid based on how many people watch or download. And so um, it's, it's money. I mean, it's not like massive money, but I'll tell you this, you guys will be getting a little extra sugar, you know, uh, as soon as we get paid by these guys, because it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's money. That's what I would call found money. So, you know, I like it. you might as well, it might, it should be shared amongst you guys who, who are helping us, you know, find this found money. So listen, for everybody that has, um, has bought from Manscaped and used our promo code and saved 20% and is enjoying the products. Good for you. And I see a lot of people on YouTube. They do. Have you guys seen this before where YouTubers have tips? Like people can send gratuities yeah. on YouTube. Did you know that? Yeah, you got to be part of YouTube's uh, financial ecosystem for that to work, though. Okay, it doesn't. I, I don't want to ask a listener for a tip. <laughs> you, you know, know what's funny is that when we were at Callaway, uh, let me put this manscaped away. When we were at Callaway, uh, we had a listener who was like very adamant about like helping us, but he was like very aggressive about it and angry about it, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he was just like, "I can't believe, first of all, that you don't because you could do it on YouTube with the chat thing that you talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't believe you don't have the the tip chat thing." And he was just like yelling at me, emailing me all angry. And I'm like, dude, we're not part of YouTube's pay per play thing. We're doing our own thing. Just and people, angry. a lot of people kept saying, do Patreon, do Patreon. It's like, dude, yeah. we don't want to charge people for this. So, like, that's not that's not how this gets down. Right. So here's what I want to say. And I'm, I mean, I'm just being honest about it. If if you buy from Manscaped and you use our promo code, great friends, that's better for us. And that's actually how we're making a couple bucks on this deal. And, you know, here we're getting close to the holidays. You want good deals. You want great products. You want good gifts to give to people or to give to yourself. And this team right here, and I'm pointing at you two in particular, um, you know, this is how we're going to pay these guys even more for the phenomenal work they've done. I mean, we're, I know we're getting to the end of the year because we're getting around Thanksgiving, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Can you guys believe 2020 is coming to an end finally? We're, when this year started, the excitement of, this is my year, 2020. This is my year. Oy. The the morning in Miami to find out Kobe died, to have the picture of us at the Clevelander at the Super Bowl. I'm drinking a Corona. Somebody goes, you're going to get coronavirus from that. I don't even know what the hell coronavirus meant. All the crazy stuff that has happened this year, which has led us through the election, which we knew was going to be crazy. Okay. Because when you thought 2020 couldn't slap any harder, here comes the election. And by the way, in the post-election where Trump is still tweeting that we won by a lot and, and people are arguing and debating about which state may or may not count their votes. Dude, there's still six more weeks of this year. Who knows what's going to happen? And that's what I, I said this a long time ago when COVID first started, it's like, don't look at the calendar thinking that that's going to make a difference. (laughs) Like it's not because we can come back to the show on January 3rd, whatever that Monday is. And, like we it's going to be the same as december 30th like like don't think don't i i get the whole like we're fascinated with calendars and days and resetting and all that 
just don't get discouraged when it's 2021 and we're still doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's my point. Hey, man, before we go, I know we're, we got, we're short on time, so I want to kind of make this quick, but it's, it's important to me to say this. I want to uh, send a shout out and a thank you to John Soderman. Uh, John Soderman, Soderbro, uh, was a, a reporter at KUSI. What do you mean was? And he, huh? What do you mean was? He don't work there no more. Oh. He don't work there no more. Oh, as of when? And it was, it, it was not a professional exit on behalf of KUSI. What happened? Everybody, they called him into the office and, and, and told him they were letting him go because of money, which is understandable. Um, but they did the same thing to Sandra Moss. They, they've done the same thing to a couple other people around there. And everybody has the right to change workforces, especially in an industry where your appearance is important. Um, but my personal relationship with John Soderman is, is different for me because he was very helpful to teach me the business at KUSI and what to look for, what not to look for him and Dave Scott. And so I just want to uh, tell him, uh, don't get too down about the way it went out because he put this long post on Facebook kind of explaining oh, what happened and how upset that. he was and what they had done. And it's just unfortunate. Um, and so I just wanted to let him know that I appreciate everything that he's done in the business and I respect him a lot. And I'm glad I was able to meet him and on my journey in this profession. I didn't know that about John Soderman. Um, so I'm just reading his post right now. I'm going to read through it. So I love this guy. I thought his character, I, too, I thought his character on TV was hilarious with the suspenders. Um, yeah. he was a former minor league baseball player, as I recall, cause he was always like a tall, big athletic looking guy. Yeah. And every time I ever ran into him, a police officer too. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yeah, he was a police officer. Every time I ever ran into this guy, he always told me how great he thought the radio show was. And so I was always so appreciative. I'm like, I don't know if he's blowing smoke or what, but if he's not, he really makes me feel special. I am really sad to hear about that. But you know, that's, that's this year, dude, is media companies like, like ESPN laying off 300 people and saying 200 jobs won't be replaced. I just saw Disney is continuing to furlough people. Well, of course, the parks are all closed. If you're KUSI and you're getting younger and less expensive, you're looking to phase out the older, more expensive personalities and talent. It's a sad reality of the business that we're in in the year that we're in. Yeah, but you can do that in a respectful manner. Like this man had to clean out his desk in front of everyone at work there. I didn't know that. I'm just reading about like that's, it right now. Yeah. That's that's not there's a again, they're a business, they're entitled to do whatever they want to do, but there's a way to do things. I was in that building for two years. I've seen some of the nastier things I've seen in this business in that building. So what I would say is you can fire whoever you want, but there's a respective way to do it to someone who's given decades to your company. Well said, Brown. All right, listen, we're back tomorrow. I wish everybody a great afternoon. Until then, peace.